Well, today is a deadline given for a special representative of the West African Bloc ECOWAS to leave Mali. Mali's transitional government ordered the envoy on Monday to leave the country within 72 hours. Foreign Affairs Minister Abdullahi Diop accused Hamidou Boli of engaging with groups, including politicians and journalists, who undertake activities hostile to the transition. Nevertheless, Diop said Mali remains committed to maintaining good relations with ECOWAS. The bloc has been pressing Mali to respect its commitment to hold presidential and legislative elections next February following an August 2020 military coup. The interim authorities this week have said they will confirm a date for elections by December. Uh, let's bring in Tulu Akerale, a CEO of TAS Security Solutions. She joins us uh, from London. Tulu, thank you for taking time to speak to us here on Africa Life. So what does the standoff between ECOWAS and Bamako mean for Mali's transition? Tulu? Well, thank you for having me on tonight. Um, although I don't represent ECOWAS personally, my avid interest in West African political development means that I can recognize ECOWAS is a supreming um, governing body. And if there is a standoff, it's most likely because Mali is jeopardizing the principles and values of what ECOWAS represents, which is, of course, cohesion and collective development and to elevate the status of West African countries. So ECOWAS has now by default put itself in the opposition camp, so to speak. And we can see that in the most recent expulsion of Hamidou Boli from, um, from Mali. Uh, he was at the forefront of ECOWAS's drive to implement the restoration of democracy. So naturally, he was a target. So I would say the transition is most definitely on hold. There are a matrix of factors that suggest that there will not be a transition to democracy in February. Um, nothing has been done to prepare uh, we haven't seen electoral lists being revised, delegation of territories, political activities, um, campaigning, voter registration. Now, none of these things can be done quickly, much less um, with the war-torn nature of the country. So uh, I do believe ECOWAS will tighten the belt, and I do not think we will see um, any transition in February. Well, speaking of tightening the belt, there is increasing defiance of ECOWAS by some of its member states like Mali and Guinea. Is the West African body running out of options on how to deal with some of its member states who appear to be undermining its principles and mandates? Um, great question. Thank you. I mean, we've seen sudden changes in the regime. Um, like you mentioned, the coup in Guinea, um, that's just Mali's neighbors. So we're seeing currently two out of 15 member states of ECOWAS are defaulting. Um, now, ECOWAS has to be loyal to the institution and its values and strengthen the states rather than blindly following the leaders. So we've seen sanctions have been given to the leaders of these countries, but it is important to remember that over 50% of Mali's budget is financed through donor assistance. So um, we've seen France has been unhappy with the invitation of Russia into the mix. Um, they were seen as an enemy of the state, France, and paid the price for essentially standing up for the ECOWAS values. Now, if we go back to 2012, um, Nigeria was actually one of the first countries to denounce the coup back then um, and the unconstitutional manner of uh, the transition. But Nigeria has its own issues and security problems. And as a West African giant can't really participate in um, Mali's affairs, which creates a, a larger problem for sub-Saharan Africa. And, we're seeing a lack of willingness on the part of the regime in Mali to move forwards towards the restoration of democracy. So I do think it's a it's a tricky situation for ECOWAS because they're not going to use force. They will take the moral high ground because of the humanitarian aid that is extended. Uh, Mali is landlocked, so there's no point really punishing the citizens. Um, we, we may see something like government to government contacts being limited. We may see a scaled back approach from diplomatic representations from ECOWAS to Mali. But uh, I think until we see this uh, active movement towards democracy in Mali, um, we're going to continue to see a knock on effect throughout the continent. And we're going to see as a result an increase in poverty and most likely deprivation. So I think it's going to be very difficult for Mali um, especially when they're faced with soldiers or insurgents or, you know, weapons. Uh, but I, I don't think they will take uh, a forceful approach. They will just scale back diplomatically and try to manage the situation that way and through sanctions. 
And uh, let's leave it there for now. Tulu Akerale, thank you for sharing your perspective. Much appreciated as well.